prevedere. Buongiorno, eh, vi presento gli ospiti sul palco. Eh, sono il regista, Joe Stevenson, e Ian McKellar. Allora, prima di dare la parola alla platea, c'è già una domanda lì. Eh, I was saying, ah, oh, can you hear me now? Yes, that uh, um, there is a lot to cry about in the world, but there's also a lot to smile about. And in Rome today, with the sun out, and it's a holiday, and we're all here for the festival, so everyone's smiling, and I'm smiling too. Ci raccontate un po' di come è avvenuto questo incontro perché avete, come avete deciso di realizzare questo documentario se è stato difficile o facile convincere uh, Ian Kellen a raccontarsi in questo film come è andata? Well I will just say that uh, I met um, Joe in London through a, a good friend of mine with whom he was going to participate in making a film and then I saw his first feature film Chicken which I highly recommend and I uh, thought was a remarkable piece of work for, for a first time director. And when he said, well, would I uh, help him make a documentary about myself? Against all my better judgment, I, I agreed because I thought he was a very good filmmaker and, and um, the film he's made about me is, <laughs> is, very, is very entertaining. But I don't like talking about myself, so I'm going to let him talk about me. <laughs> um. Well, it sort of, it did come about, uh, I asked Ian after, um, after Ian had decided that he wasn't going to write an autobiography. Um, and so, basically, I just felt that I understood why he wasn't going to write the autobiography, but I felt like his story is an inspiring one, and uh, like Ian said, that there's a lot to cry about in the world at the minute, but um, his story is an inspiring one, um, and I know that I've been inspired by it, and I kind of wanted to share that. Um, and so that's kind of my motivation. And, and he came round to my house with his, with his uh, camera and the, all, all the other people. And I just sat there for two days. Two Is days it? talking about myself. It's the most <laughs> dreadful thing to have to do. Can you imagine? Because I don't know about you, but I think I'm the least interesting person in the world. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, don't you feel that about yourself? Oh, perhaps not. <laughs> So, so, so for, when someone says, please talk about yourself, please, I get, I get a bit embarrassed, but anyway. that embarrassment is in the film. It's, uh, it's, uh, I like looking at it because I don't think it's me, I think it's, uh, I think it's somebody it's else. It's playing the part. Playing the part, very good, yes. Allora, c'è una domanda lì. Have you, have, have you seen the film? Sì, io l'ho visto, io l'ho visto. No, but what about these people? No, are they going to see it? Yeah. Io l'ho visto, l'ho visto questa mattina e l'ho trovato molto interessante. Non è vero che la sua vita non è interessante, che lei non è interessante. Secondo me lo è moltissimo. E volevo farle... No, no, veramente, veramente. Volevo farle due domande. La prima eh, riguardo il suo lavoro, e cioè come è stato per un gigante della scena, perché lei non è un grande attore, è un gigante della scena, passare da Shakespeare a X-Men, il Signore degli Anelli. E poi un'altra cosa, proprio che mh, mh, 
in relazione anche al documentario. Lei nel documentario parla molto anche della sua sessualità e si ricorda come a 49 anni, credo fosse l'88, l'89 o qualcosa del genere, quindi parliamo di una trentina d'anni fa, lei ha dichiarato ehm, di essere omosessuale, si è battuto contro l'articolo 28, è andato anche a da uno street insomma uh, si è battuto contro le discriminazioni adesso noi in questi giorni vediamo che si parla tanto dell'outing di Kevin Spacey che ci fa pensare anche per il modo e le circostanze in cui questo è avvenuto che forse poi le cose non sono cambiate tantissimo se uno deve tenerlo nascosto e uscire allo scoperto in questo modo però vorrei sapere lei cosa ne pensa grazie Um, well, if you, um, the bulk of your question is about uh, coming out as a gay person. I, I cannot recommend it strongly enough. I think uh, any gay person who does come out will tell you that that is the best thing that they have ever done in their life because they stop lying, and <clears throat> they, start, they, they tell the truth about themselves, they become altogether a more attractive person, a more confident person, uh, and everything about your life improves, and, in, uh, including, in my case, my acting. Uh, I was told by, by critics and by friends that my acting had improved. Of course it had improved because I was now a confident person uh, and I was not hiding anything and I was able to use my uh, work to tell the truth about human nature rather than using it to, to disguise. Uh, it is not easy to come out in, uh, for, for some people. Uh, they, they, they have problems at home with, with, with aged parents who they, they don't want to upset. For, um, there are, what's going wrong here? No. Um, Everyone's worried that uh, they'll lose their jobs. You know, a politician says, oh, nobody will vote for me. Uh, a teacher said, oh, the, the, the kids won't uh, respect me anymore. I work in the office. No, they, they won't like me anymore because I'm different. Actors, oh, I won't get jobs anymore. None of it is true. My career as a film actor took off very shortly after I was honest and came out. So that's my message to uh, other actors who are having a problem, don't. And, and in fact, young people don't have a problem. I visit schools a great deal in the United Kingdom, encouraging them to be nice to each other. And I discover that there are children of 13 and 14 who are confident enough of their sexuality to talk to their parents about it, talk to their friends about it, talk to their teachers about it, and they, they achieve, at the age of 14, what it took me 49 years to achieve. So I think the world, uh, My part of the world is getting, is getting better from that point of view. And what was the other question about? Oh, Shakespeare. Sh uh, yeah. Yeah, sh yeah, okay, okay. Uh, when I started acting, I, I, worked, in main, I worked mainly in, in, in the theatre. Although I did come to Rome, to Cinecita, for, for, for two uh, uh, screen tests. One to be in Barbarella with uh, Jane Fonda, and, and she made me eggs and bacon in her, uh, in her uh, <laughs> little room at Chilichita. I didn't get that part. And, and for another part, to play a Sicilian bandit. And when they'd, uh, they, 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 they did the, they put makeup on me and a pair of tight trousers and boots and guns, and I came in and I swaggered about for the camera. Uh, and at the end, the director said, no, uh, Ian was too charmingly English to play the Sicilian bandit. <laughs> So I never made it in, in, uh, early on in, in cinema. It was only when I played with uh, Judy Dench in the production of Macbeth by William Shakespeare for the Royal Shakespeare Company, when we played that in a very, very small theatre, that I began to think that perhaps acting was not about being able to fill a large auditorium like this, but more to be able to uh, uh, communicate directly to with an audience very, very close. Well, there's no audience that gets closer to you than Uh, they do in the cinema because the camera is, is, is uh, so intrusive. And, uh, and so I'd been preparing gradually during my career for the day, happy day when I might be given a big responsibility in cinema. And that didn't happen until I was 60 years old, you know. So I'm, uh, I, I say to young actors, don't expect your career to take off. No, no, get, be ready for the luck when it arrives. And it may not arrive until you're in your middle age. Uh, think about having a career, not about being a star or being rich or famous. But that's nothing to do with uh, the business of acting, really. Uh, and uh, so, 
it, it all happened in due time and due course. It happened as it should have happened. And if I, if I had played that Sicilian bandit at Chinichita when I was uh, 24, probably you would never have heard of me again. I would have been so dreadful. <laughs> Eh, buongiorno, sono Roberto Sapienza e Bracoli. Sir McKellen, volevo chiedere nel documentario, la parte finale. Sir? Ah, no. Perfectly, yes. Dear, dear, dear. Sir, mi sente? Buongiorno, sir. Sono Roberto Sapienza di Bracoli. Volevo chiederle, nella fine del documentario dice, non so se con malinconia, che lei ha deciso di non avere figli e di dedicare tutte le sue energie al teatro, perché dice io sono un attore, so fare solo quello, so solo recitare e, ehm, e non riuscirei a fare altro se non recitare. E invito i miei colleghi che riescono anche ad avere figli. Le volevo chiedere, ma quindi non ha mai pensato ad adottare un figlio, non ha mai sentito questa esigenza e il regista, per fare i complimenti, come ha costruito l'intervista, come ha pensato, come ha costruito appunto la parte iniziale dell'adolescente di Sam McKellen col bambino, mi è piaciuta molto, è molto emozionante accompagnare le immagini alla, alla, alla narrazione di Sam McKellen. Grazie. Ok, well, all right, I, I, I'll answer first. Um, Until I was uh, uh, 29 years old, it was illegal to have sex for me. <laughs> Never mind about adopting children. I wasn't allowed to have sex. I was a criminal. It never occurred to me that I would be bringing up children. I wouldn't, it would, would not have been, would be against the law. Did I want to? Actually, no. I'm too selfish a person. I, I thought, used to think it was one of the best things about being gay is that you didn't have to have children. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, now, of course, for, 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 for people who are mature enough in their relationships and, and, and with their self-confidence, uh, to pass that on to the next generation, wonderful thing. <clears throat> But far too late for me now, far too late. But I have a great relationship with young people. I have a lot of young fans. A five-year-old came up to me in the uh, uh, Tatteria last night. Uh, she, was, she was having a, a meal with, with her parents and she wanted to come over to say hello to Gandalf. <laughs> well, what, could, what could be sweeter or, or more lovely for me? Uh, and, and I don't have to put her to bed or worry about her education. Or... <laughs> so I, I'm very happy with, with, with uh, the way things are from that point of view. There was a compliment about how you'd finished the film. Uh, I think it was about the earlier part of the film. It was, the, it was uh, I mean, in terms of the images that we used, there was a lot of going through um, a lot of photo albums. <laughs> um, and it, it took a long time to get that right or get what we felt was right. And then in terms of, we, sh we show and recreate earlier stories um, with actors um, because It felt like those stories were important to, um, I suppose, sort of the creation of the Mandalay. So I kind of wanted uh, the audience to be able to fall into, uh, fall in love with the past and the way that you talk about it. You, you talk very, it, it's very sort of, you love where you came from, the people that brought you up. Um, and I wanted them to be able to sort of go into that world and make a connection as well with young Ian. Um, As, as well as they are making a connection, hopefully, uh, with Ian of today in the interview. Um, yeah, and so we kind of wanted to do that. And also as well, there was this idea that it's cinema and, you know, I wanted it to be a piece of cinema. I, I didn't design this documentary to be for television as such. I wanted it to feel like a piece of cinema. So that also is part of it. I could imagine, I went to see the, the screening of this in London uh, and, and found that I was surrounded by, by old friends, old lovers. What were they doing there? I thought this was just a, a one-man show that he, he directed. No, it was a, it, he dramatized bits of my life. And the people who were playing, my friends, my relatives, uh, people who had affected my, my, my life, were uh, old friends. 
actors, one of them's here today, David Fox. Uh, and uh, so I was in tears by the end because uh, the, fr the, the friendship, this is such a big part of my life, uh, was there on the screen. And these people had all turned up to give their time uh, under uh, Joe's direction to contribute. So <clears throat> probably the person who will enjoy this film most is, is the one who least wanted it to be made. That's <laughs> Allora c'è una domanda lì e poi arriviamo anche qui, prego. Eh, salve, volevo sapere il suo rapporto con il testo di Edoardo De Filippo, il sindaco di Rioni San Giano, è un suo ricordo. Well, uh, yes and, and, and no. <laughs> it 
if you're acting, uh, you, you are engaging with the character that you're playing. You're trying to become him and to let him become you. That's an attitude of mind. Now, in the theatre, uh, you prepare, uh, you think, you talk about, you practice, you get it wrong, you get it right, and eventually one day an audience comes to see you, and you have to project, you have to tell the audience what's going on up here, because they're, they're too far away to see you. When I worked in that small theatre in Stratford with uh, Macbeth, with Judy Dench, I discovered another sort of attitude. Uh, which is that the audience is very close, and the audience is very close in the, in the, in the cinema. There's always another character. In fact, it's true. Once, once, once the early filmmakers discovered that a camera could move, the camera began to move into the film and become a character in the film. That's quite different from what an audience does. An audience sits there as an editor, as a director, choosing what they will take from the performance. In cinema, it's all given to you uh, through through the eyes of through the eye of uh, the camera. So the other actors must uh, treat the ca camera with respect uh, uh, as a friend, uh, but as a close friend, uh, and not do too much acting. <laughs> but the, the the attitude of, of, of becoming another person is exactly the same. So it's it's it's, it's yes. And, uh, the, the acting I did when I was thirteen was at school. Um, Thank goodness for me, um, Shake, the, 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 the most famous, the greatest Englishman who ever lived was a playwright. An actor, actually, as well. Not a general, not a politician, not a king, not a queen. Man of the theatre, an entertainer. And at 13, uh, I d discovered him through... A, um, <laughs> doing little extracts from the place at school. I then went on and did the same thing at university, and it was only then that I decided to become a professional actor without going to a drama school. I learnt on the job. Buonasera, sono qui. Buonasera. Eh, per, una, per una pura coincidenza la mia domanda si riallaccia perfettamente alla precedente, quindi il discorso fila dritto. Eh, a proposito di personaggi, volevo sapere eh, qual è stato il personaggio da lei più distante, visto che molti attori dicono che il bello del loro mestiere è proprio interpretare qualcuno che non, ci somiglia, non, non vi somiglia affatto. Se c'è stato un personaggio particolarmente appunto, lontano da lei a quale invece è più affezionato e se c'è un personaggio che vorrebbe interpretare che non le hanno ancora proposto grazie oh dear, I don't know yeah. um, my, my, my act keeps changing uh, I keep working at it I don't think I've reached the end of the road yet uh, and uh, I'm, I'm lucky to still have some uh, mental and physical uh, strengths to, that I can carry on. Uh, I used to think in the past that uh, acting was all about disguise, putting on wigs, putting on moustaches, wearing odd clothes, lips, funny voices, something different. Well, for one reason or another, and one of the reasons is having come out as a gay man, I think now acting is not about disguise, but it's about revelation. And what I'm revealing is that uh, the only truth, that, that, that the only original thing I've ever had to say in my life, I think, about living, about life, about human nature, is that we are all capable of doing absolutely anything. We're all capable of being a murderer. We're all capable of falling in love, we're all capable of being cruel, we're capable of being kind, we're capable of being foolish, we're capable of being wise. Uh, and I, I know that to be true because I can represent all those different qualities and attributes in, in, in the characters that I play. So it doesn't seem to me odd to, to, to play King Lear who thought he was a god or King Richard II, who thought he was a god and discovered that no, he wasn't, he was a man. 
it doesn't seem to be odd uh, as a gay man to, to fall in love with Juliet. I can imagine that. We can all imagine that. All the straight people here can imagine what it's like to be gay. And all the gays can imagine what it's like to be straight. Imagine, imagine. We can all do anything. So that's, that's what I've discovered. And what that has to do with your question, I have no idea. Um, <clears throat> but I'll just pass that on to you. <laughs> so that, I think that's, I think that's uh, at the heart. That, that rather than, oh, I, I, I want to be, to play Napoleon, or uh, I want to play uh, Benito Mussolini or something, I don't know. I, 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 I never had a list of, of people I wanted to play, but... And, and, and just to confirm what I'm saying, I, I don't stick on beards anymore, this is, this is my own beard. <laughs> but actually it, is, it belongs to King Lear, a, a character, one of the great, Shakespeare's greatest plays, and, and I finished did the last <laughs> performance on Saturday. Uh, and here, uh, here I am in Rome. Rome is my treat for having got through King Lear. <laughs> I'm so honored to talk to you first. <laughs> so my question is about your roles because when I when I had interviews with uh, you know actors that are in their sixties, they always complain about the roles they are offered. Like you know they don't want to participate in superhero movies or you know those modern sci-fi fantasy characters. And it seems to me that you actually enjoy playing those characters. So I would like to know how do you approach them and if you have something to complain about. <laughs> I didn't quite hear all that, but uh, is it, how do I choose, choose what parts to play, uh, or what parts do I get offered? Well, it's more, if you like to play those modern characters, you know, in sci-fi and fantasy movies, I think about oh, the man. <laughs> I, I like to do different things, basically. So if I, I once I played Gandalf, who is 7,000 years old, uh, all the scripts that came my way for, were for old men with long beards. <laughs> and that all came to a climax when I was asked to play God. God is even older than Gandalf. <laughs> Why would I want to play another wizard? Why would I want to play Dumbledore? Why would I want to play... Any? I played the wizard. I've done it. Uh, Magneto, I've played Magneto, why would I want to be in, in, in another superhero uh, movie, really? Uh, so I, I, I on, on the whole, look for something that I've never done before. And, and also, more than that, a part that I don't believe I can play. I like that challenge. If the director says, I think you'll be very good at this part, and I say, I don't know how I'm going to do it, that, I think that's a perfect situation for me because that gets my adrenaline running and, and my ambition running and, and, and my dependence on the director running and, and that's going to be a good working relationship. So, um, I, I, you know, in, in, in cinema I've done all sorts of stuff. I, I've done silly stuff on television. I've been in long-running soap operas on tele, English TV. Uh, on stage I've been in English pantomime, which is singing and dancing and dressing up as a woman at, at Christmas time for fun. Uh, I've been in Shakespeare, I've been in modern plays. Uh, I haven't been in a musical yet. Hmm. So if anyone's got one that I think I'm fit to... The trouble is I can't sing. <laughs> dopo, così tanti, dopo così tanti anni di carriera, c'è ancora qualcosa di cui ha paura come attore, qualcosa che la spaventa? I don't know what you're saying, Donnie, you were talking about singing. <laughs> Interesting, go on. Afraid? No, I'm afraid of nothing. <laughs> Except technology. <laughs> I'm scared of all sorts of things. I'm scared of politicians. 
I'm scared of I'm scared of soldiers. I'm scared of bullets. I, I, I'm scared of stupidity. But um, when it comes to work, I'm not scared of anything. So I'm lucky to have discovered a job where I'm allowed to be myself or an extension of myself uh, and, and take risks. I, in in theatre and in, in cinema, I, I do the equivalent of jumping off, off the top of a, a building, not knowing what's going to happen. Because in my work, I can fly. I don't mean this my detail. I mean, I, everything seems to be all right. Everything, it, it's a world in which there are no dangers and, and no stupidity. And, and, uh, and then when you're doing that, and feeling like that in the company of other people who are doing the same thing. It's wonderful. <laughs> There's a line from uh, one of my favourite films that I've made, uh, uh, Gods and Monsters, directed by uh, Bill Condon, about the English film director James Ware. And he has a line uh, in that film which, which uh, sums up the way I feel about my work. Making movies is the most wonderful thing in the world. Working with friends, entertaining people. Uh, and in that endeavor, uh, I'll, I'll do anything. I don't care what I'm paid, I don't care where it is, I don't care whether we're going to the top of a mountain or up a field, in a plane, in a cellar, I don't mind. Long hours, short hours. It, none, none of it matters. It's all, uh, it, it's, more, it's more like life than life. So why do I want children? C'è ancora una domanda lì? Allora, buongiorno, eh, io avrei un desiderio e una domanda. Il primo desiderio è vorrei sentirla recitare tu non puoi passare. No. Well, who, who asked that question? Well, let us have a look at you. Stand up. Come forward. I, I, when I've looked at you, I'll let you know what I'm going to say to you. <laughs> yes, well, why not? Yes. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll tell you uh, what, I tell, uh, what I tell young children when I go and see them in school. Uh, if you uh, are you a student or you have been, yeah. Uh, well, you know that you have to work hard for your examinations, uh, and, and if you don't work hard, if you don't do your revision, if you don't take seriously your work, what will happen when the examination results come out is you shall not pass. <laughs> If you read the books in English, you'll discover that uh, Gandalf never says that line at all. Uh, he says, uh, you, you cannot pass, not you shall not pass. Slight difference in English. Uh, so uh, we got it wrong. I, I just said it wrong one day and we're stuck with that and uh, there we go. Dov'è? È scioccato e svenuto. <ride> Avevi una domanda però, ecco. Allora, la mia domanda è, per lei che lavora nel campo da molti, molti anni, com'è cambiato il rapporto con ehm, la tecnologia? Nel senso, nel Signore degli Anelli e nello Hobbit. Nel Signore degli Anelli vi è una computer grafica molto meno invasiva di quanto non ci fosse nello Hobbit. E... Niente, in particolar modo con eh, lavorare con il green screen e tutte le... Yeah, okay. Yes, oh, well, it, it, it's, it. Well, what is green screen? Green screen is uh, a screen 
on which is projected a, a picture in front of which the actor stands and the camera uh, records the scene. When you're on the stage, uh, they put behind you scenery, it's not real, it's scenery, pretend. And the actors stand in front and the audience sits there, that's green screen. Yeah, no problem, yeah, no problem. But the thrill is that uh, for most of the time in Lord of the Rings, and in The Hobbit, most of the time, we were there. If you saw Gandalf on top of a mountain, that was me, I was there. I was taken there by a helicopter. I was given a three course hot uh, lunch. There was a bed up there for me to sleep in under, under, under a canopy. But we were there, that was real snow. That was real wind. That was real blue sky. Uh, now, sometimes you had to do a close-up when you got back to the studio, and that's when Green Street would come in. But no, for the, for, the, for the main part of it, we were there, and that was one of the great thrills, of course, because New Zealand is <coughs> one of the most beautiful countries in the world, and has a variety of scenery which the, the films were able to take advantage of. But you know, everything about making a film is, is artificial, really. Mm -hmm. You don't ever play the scene all the way through, you do little bits. But you get to know that as an actor, that, that's you. it's not real life. It's not real life on the stage. This isn't really real life, you know, it is. So, one bit of technology against another doesn't make uh, much difference. And, uh, but it, 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 it's, it's not true that in those particular films, that, that it was all green screen. Uh, it wasn't. There were examples of green screen that were miserable f for me, and uh, 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 but that was just uh, a couple of days. Uh, most of the time, I, mean, I was quite at ease with it. Purtroppo.